Hi, I'm Melissa Ann Goodwin, and I'm the author of The Christmas Village and its sequel, Return to Canterbury. My books are available on Amazon.com. This is my third uh, excerpt reading from The Christmas Village, so if you would like to check out the other two, uh, they're here on YouTube. I'm picking up now further into the story. Uh, it's the story of Jamie Reynolds, a 12-year-old boy who's gone to visit his grandparents um, in Vermont for Christmas because his father has disappeared under mysterious circumstances. And we know that his father did something bad because all the people in town were angry with him and Jamie and his mom felt like outcasts, so that's why they went to Vermont. At Grandma and Grandpa's house, uh, Grandma tries to cheer Jamie up by putting up her Christmas village and he loves the Christmas Village and thinks it's absolutely wonderful. And he wishes that he could live in it because it seems like it would be absolutely perfect and nothing there would ever change. And by gosh, don't you know, but magically, one night, uh, shortly before Christmas, Jamie's wish comes true and he finds himself in the Christmas Village. And in the village, uh, it's, it's also gone back in time to the year 1932. Of course, once Jamie's wish to be in the village, uh, to live in the village, comes true, all he really wants after that is to be able to get back home to his mom and his grandparents in time for Christmas. And so here we are, uh, oh, about two-thirds of the way into the story, and Jamie uh, is he's befriended uh, Kelly and Christopher Pennysworth, who are the skaters that, on the pond of the Christmas village, and he's staying with Ida and her seven boarders, um, one of them named Rusty, uh, at, at the boarding house, and they're all very kind to him. But he's getting worried about how he's going to get back home to his family in time for Christmas. So I'm picking up the story here. Jamie suddenly wanted to be alone. He got up, grabbed his jacket from the coat rack by the front door, and slipped outside. An almost full moon lit up the snowy landscape. Wisps of wood smoke from chimneys throughout the village floated like gray ghosts across the clear night sky. He sat down on the top step. He closed his eyes and let his mind wander. He remembered what Rusty had said the other night about hard times showing what people are made of. He thought about the man who had asked them for a dime and about people standing in lines to get bread. He thought about Christopher's generosity and about the kindness he'd been shown by the people of Canterbury. Then his thoughts turned to his father. He had begun to understand how his dad might have felt when things went wrong, just like Jamie felt now, scared and not knowing what to do. Jamie thought about his mother, and for the first time he realized how awful it must have been for her when his dad left, and how hard she had tried to protect him from what had happened. He longed for the sound of her voice and for the chance to rest his head in her lap again. Jamie looked up at the moon. I want to go home, he whispered. I want to go home so much. His lower lip quivered. The muscles in his face began to twitch. His body trembled. The first sob was like a hiccup. The second one jerked his head and shoulders. The next one started as a wave in his belly that surged into his chest and flooded his heart with tears. Then wave after wave of sorrow pulsed through him, his whole body shuddering and tears gushing out like water from a geyser. He wept for his father, who had lacked courage in a time of trouble, for his mother, who had tried to pick up the pieces, and for himself for being caught in the middle of it all. He wept with frustration for the unfairness of being 12 years old and trying to solve a problem that seemed impossible. He wept with desperation for being far from home and with terror that he would never find his way back. He wept at the thought of never seeing his parents and grandparents again. He wept because he felt like he was running out of time. After a long, long time, his sobs ebbed until they were no longer waves but only ripples. Jamie wiped his, away his tears with a sleeve. Looking up, he saw a million stars twinkling in the clear night sky. He whispered, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. He stopped, feeling silly for reciting a little kid's poem about wishing on a star. 
Well, why not? I wish that I could come here and that happened, so why can't I wish to go back home? He squeezed his eyelids shut and finished. I wish I may, I wish I might be home for Christmas. So if you'd like to find out if Jamie gets home for Christmas, and if he does, how does he get home for Christmas, then you can pick up The Christmas Village on Amazon.com. And don't forget the sequel, Return to Canterbury, also available. And you can save money if you buy the two of them together. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas.